hundred acres. At full build out, we anticipate which will occur over about 30 years. Though right now, if the market holds, so we started the plan in 98. The first construction started around 2001-ish. Um, if we hold tight right now, pretty much all of the private development will finish in the next three years. That's no promise. The you know, economy changes, then we get something else. But if we're lucky, the next few years we finish the private development. That'll spin off money that allows us to finish all the affordable housing and the parks. Um, so at full build-up, we'll have invested about $700 million of pr uh, public infrastructure funds. That, again, is using that tax increment in Mission Bay, all of that, except for the part for affordable housing is going into the infrastructure because there was, while it was um, built for trains, it really wasn't built for uh, urban developments. We need to put in new streets, uh, utilities, and such. There'll be about 64 uh, residential units, 20, about almost 30% will be affordable. <coughs> In Mission Bay, the majority of the affordable units will be standalone ones like these. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the map that shows it. Um, the developer, our master developer, started out as Southern Pacific, who spun it off to a TELUS, a kind of a development thing. They're donating parcels to us for uh, construction of affordable housing. We then use a share of the tax increment to build it, along with other funding sources. So the majority of the housing will be, affordable housing will be in standalone projects. We do have a few projects that have inclusionary housing as well. Um, we're gonna have about four million square feet of private office and biotech. That's gonna change a little bit if the uh, Warriors Arena goes through. We'll have about half a million of the office now being developed as an arena. Um, UCSF has been very successful. They just opened their new hospital down there a week or so ago. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go down and check it out, sneak in there. They've done a lovely job. Uh, new Southern Station is about to open as well, so we're excited that the um, Southern Station will be relocating down here, a new fire station, as well as the police headquarters will be coming down, and we anticipate next couple months. Do you guys know when you're moving in? We were told uh potentially March 27th, Southern Station would go into the Okay, city. terrific, yeah. yeah. So we're really, the community is really excited about having you all down there. Um, we're gonna have a new hotel up in that kind of number one purple part, uh, retail serving the area. When we planned this, we really wanted to have something that had jobs, housing, everything integrated in there. Um, school site, there's been a new, the first new public library was built down here. At the time, it was the first one in 20 years. Um, about 49 acres of public park and ultimately 31, about 31,000 permanent jobs. We also have programs to ensure that uh, we give preference during um, design of buildings to local firms, small firms, as well as during construction. We have a goal of 50% of the jobs being, of construction jobs being given to uh, San Francisco residents. Plus, plus uh, women? Yes. Uh, well. So it started out as a minority and women-owned oh, right. pro uh, program, which has changed in federal law. It's morphed into a small business, but we do try to ensure that the um, there's as much of a reflection of the diversity of San Francisco as possible, both from a racial and um, yeah, because I'm missing things like construction jobs. Yeah, That's no. Most, most okay. Yeah, no. We we definitely try and encourage everyone, you know, within the legality that we can okay. um, from federal law, to make sure it does reflect. Um, with the economy being so good, right now we're not getting as high as percentage as we want. But again, uh, and we're working with other city agencies to be training folks up. And I see that as a lot of it is less of a reflection of people not trying to more that luckily the economy is really good right now. We've got a lot of people in the workforce. But if people um, have any friends who are interested in working, uh, the Office of Economic and Workforce Development works to get people trained up and get them connected with the jobs out there. And we would definitely love to see additional women. Yes, ma'am. A degree oh. um, lab. Uh -huh. One of, uh, since there's no legend. I know oh, yes, sir. Yeah. So what's the gray labs? So the kind of blue one and the red one? Or the? The ones in between the yellow, the blue, and the red. OK. Um, let's see. It right. looks gray to me. So okay. Water. Those, you know, those are um, private streets or pedestrian walkways. So basically, it's the. Um, some of them are going to be private streets. Some of them are just going to be walkway fire zones. But it kind of breaks it up into more block but shapes. It, it, it looks like lots. 
Yes, let me just. Um, if you go down there, it's like where they have those that green area. Like right no, 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 no. Up, up, further, up, 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 up here. No, up. No, 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 no. Talking about right here. Does no, no. I'm forward. talking about in Gray between the, the, the yellow and the blue. Oh, these ones here. Yeah. Right. That is a that is the Commons Park. So all of okay. the green will be future okay. parks. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. What? It's a funny. I mean, the one thing, you know. Hindsight 50 50. One of the things, if I could do it over again, I would integrate that yellow with the blue and red a little bit more. Yeah, I would too. Because Part, of, yeah, because that's it it's like in the same area. It's not as integrated as it could. One of the fears was um, when we created this was the envision of a biotech <coughs> hub. There were not a lot of biotech companies in San Francisco. People had a lot of fear of what would get out of the biotech. Um, they're actually extremely highly regulated, and they're probably uh, less chance of anything air, animal, whatever, escaping out of there. But a lot of it, my understanding is people wanted to have a buffer between the residents and the offers because at that point they had this fear that who knows what would be escaping out of those biotech labs. And, you know, yeah. it, it was untested, had to prove to people that it, it wasn't going to turn into that. So, so that's, that's what I've heard. The history tells of why there's that band in between. Yes, sir. So the 49 acres, that's not just in that area, is it? Yes. Yes, it'll be 41 <coughs> acres that our agency will manage until it's complete and we turn back to the city, and then eight acres on UCSF. You know that that looks like a boundary between the poor and the rich, um, like all other urban cities. Well, except the, the uh, resident, the unfortunately, actually, if you look on this map, because the southern part is all the employment, so there's no residential here. Um, Look on this map here. The light yellow are the affordable sites, and the dark orange are the um, market rate. And so, if you'll notice, we tried really hard to make sure that they were integrated together, and that the affordable sites did not get the worst sites. So we have nice bay views here. We've got waterfront ones here. So it does. I agree with you. This makes it look separate, but within the yellow, which is where all of the residential, both market rate and affordable, is. We tried really hard to make sure that they were all scattered through and integrated. Yes, sir? Is Dying affordable? <laughs> it depends on the project. Um, so it's based on the income. We have a range. So our first project was for um, families. And it, I believe, goes up to 50% area medium income. Um, I didn't bring my uh, ch cheat sheet on what that trends you. You don't have a cheat sheet. I don't. Um, I'm going to try to see if it jumps in my head. So we've got um, several which are family oriented, which are um, up to 50% area medium income, but also have a set aside for formerly homeless. So the project we just completed has 150 units. 25% um, of those units are affordable to, or are targeted for um, previously homeless families. So that can range from anywhere from zero income up to maximum of 30. So a lot of them are paying a couple hundred a month. We do have one project which is um, condominiums. So that does go up to about 100, I think 100% um, area median income. So that's more than 100,000 for a family of four. Uh, just because to qualify for the condos and the payments, um, typically we put those on the higher end. But most of our projects are 50% or less, or a lot of them are targeting formerly homeless, so it can be zero. Um, uh -huh. Our city, uh, and many other cities, uh, have a very deeply influx crowd of homeless people, singles. Uh -huh. And it doesn't seem to be anything being done about that. But when it's all over and said, the poor people who are really out there who really need it don't get it. So our next project that we're going to be, again, we have um, the last two projects that we've done, 25% of the units were for formerly homeless. The next project we're going to do is a um, targeting single, uh, single um, person households, formerly uh, homeless possibly with a mixture of veterans. And so that'll be our next project, recognizing that need. Forgive me, would you give me a number with that sound like? Would, would it be like 25%, let's say, or 100 units in the place? 
Also, uh, Mission Bay is not the only project that we're doing affordable housing in. Unfortunately, I didn't come prepared with all the details about our affordable housing pro um, project, but we could have someone come out here who can talk about kind of globally what we're doing. I think I think a good way to, to respond to this person's question is it's kind of like when you go into a restaurant. There's only so many tables. There's only so many chairs, and we've gotten such an influx of homeless. Mm -hmm. We just what are we going to do? I mean, we're not going to give away. We're not going to give away the property just for that. I mean, we need that reoccurring tax base coming in. You have to think about these tech people coming in, even though people are against them. They're our tax base. That's helping to pay for this stuff. So I guess that would be the best way to answer this: is you go to a restaurant, you don't have enough seats at the restaurant. What do you do with them? You have to turn them away. That's a good question over here. Yes, it, it is. I mean, truthfully, it is always a challenge. Yeah. So, to the best we can. Trying to, uh, yeah, trying to meet as much of the need as we can. Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to say, if we could have you do your presentation, uh -huh. because we've got trans figures, sure. too, we only have a limited amount of time. People who want to have to ask specific questions can do so after the meeting. Okay, then I'm going to just... Like, me and me, you need to ask questions. Like, I mean, you, and then I just had a quick question. Um, this is the presentation, and we have to do that. Uh, yeah, it may be on here, but um, you can do it after the no. The, uh, just just across from the uh, Mont A, the, the Giants. I don't know. Uh, because I know that uh, right now they're actually like you're creating a the yard, as they call it. Right. And, uh, but that's just temporary. Right. So, right. so what, where is that? So you're asking about, so it's this parcel here. It's port-owned property. It's actually outside of Mission Bay. So the temporary retail that's been in the news for the yard would be located up here north in the existing parking lot. This project is going through its own project uh, process. Um, so it's outside of our area. It's okay. led by um, the port. After the recent election, which requires any height change on the on port properties to get voter approval, they slow down a little bit. Um, yeah, but we could definitely get you in touch with the right folks to have them come out. Which is why they have proposed to put that temporary, you know, right, like, held out uh, the beer and garden. I, I mean, I also work with the Giants, so that's why I was okay. so Thank you. Um, so basically, um, Summarize where we are with Mission Bay. Mission Bay North, which is north of the channel, is almost complete. We have one last project that's under uh, starting construction soon. That will actually be a mixed income rental project. Um, we have over 4,000 units completed. Uh, of those, 822 are affordable, ranging anywhere from moderate income condominiums down uh, to home uh, housing for seniors, formerly homeless, and families. Uh, we've got about 1.7 million square feet of private biotech. Uh, we're working in the bottom left. Uh, the Warriors are interested in relocating here, so one of the current big projects we're working on are all the studies and community process to um, analyze relocating the uh, stadium here, so that gives a pretty picture of what it might look like. And then the new UCSF Children's Women Cancer Hospital just opened up over on um, Super Bowl Sunday. Um, so that's a great addition to the community as well. Uh, we have over 15 parks, uh, new parks completed. We're about finishing up with a new children's park, which we're hoping to do a groundbreaking in summer. 
uh, local police and fire stations almost completed. We have a library and then substantial infrastructure already going in, and we're hoping to finish up the rest of the roads and the major infrastructure in the next three or four years. With that, I am going to turn you over to Shane. Can I just ask you one quick question? Yes, sir. So there's been some speculation of Google buying properties down there in the Mission Bay area. Uh -huh. is, that, is that true or false? Yes, there has, it's true. There have been lots of speculations. Um, currently, right now, I would doubt it. Uh, Uber I just purchased two. Uh, so we have, of the sites that are available, I mean, unless something changes, pretty much all the sites have been recently purchased. There is a spec building which is um, being built, which could house some of uh, Uber stuff or uh, Google stuff. It'd be, they've got about 600,000 square feet there. I have not been told that that's who they're talking to, but usually I find out pretty late in the process on those type of negotiations. Well, they they they, they titled it a campus, so I assume it's no room down there. No, um, Salesforce had owned a bunch of about 14 acres down there, and so there had been talk I'd heard about uh, Google buying that off of Salesforce and doing a similar campus that Salesforce had pr uh, proposed. That since then, UCSF has purchased about three acres of that. The uh, Warriors are looking at. Yeah. purchasing the middle portion, and then Uber just purchased the northern portion, so that's been broken into three. So it's not that it can't be done, but I would, at this point it's more doubtful than if it was, say, a year ago and all that was still together. Okay, so the other, the other portion I heard is that they, they were also looking at the mission. Yeah, I've heard a lot of rumors and looking all around, and you're starting to see pop, things pop up, so um, the interest in soon. <laughs> Nothing I've heard. So I've heard a lot of rumors over the years. I mean, just from what I've seen with the sale out there, again, it doesn't mean that they can't come in in some format, but that large scale campus, the way it's been sold off recently would be much more difficult than a year ago. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Shane Hart, and I'm with the former um, redevelopment agency. And again, uh, like Catherine said, thanks for, for inviting us here. And, uh, it's great to get out and show you guys what we're up to. Um, just one caveat, I've, I've only been working on this project for two weeks. So I can, I can, I'll be able to answer as many questions as, as, as far as, you know, what I know. Um, otherwise, I'll find out for you and I'll get answers uh, back to you if I can't answer the question. So. Um, I think it'd be easier for me to go straight to the overall plan. I think it's easier to, to go, you guys have the one that's, that, that I just handed out. It's easier if I just go through that. Um, Catherine, how do I go forward here? Um, just use the little down arrows. Go down. The arrow? Yeah. Either down or right. Excuse. Okay, so this is the plan that I handed out. And um, our office is responsible for, for um, Handling the sale of all the Caltrans parcels, which those are located right here, and that's where the freeway used to be. And the overall plan is about 40 acres. And the overall plan is what you would you look at your map, and you can see the red line on the edge here. Okay, that's 40 acres in total. And the area that we're responsible for is about 10 of that. And within that 10 acres, um, we have a total of about 3,400 units, of which 35% of those have to be affordable. And uh, all those residential units are built right in this area here. Okay, and then we also have an office building that's going to be built on Block Five. And. Um, for the residential, we'll start out with that. But if you look at your map, and if we start from uh, left to right there, and you can see block nine, that one we actually just closed today. And so that was sold to a developer called Avant, and they have partnered up with an affordable builder called Bridge. And you can see we, that, that that one is gonna be 436 market rate units, about 109 affordable units. And they plan on starting this year and completing in 2017. And all of these projects, each of these blocks usually have one large tower. And that tower will go anywhere from 30 stories to 50 stories. And then some of them 
the affordable will be in a, in a smaller building next to it. And in some, in some of the buildings, the, the affordable will actually be, be within the, within the building.